Hey, this is Erin Lindstrom, and you're listening to Thank You For You. This is a show about celebrating and acknowledging our humanness as well as our beingness, the easy and the hard, the gifts and the (laughs) gifts we don't really like but choose to accept anyway. This is a show about and for people in pursuit of more peace, more joy, more money, more justice, and more of the awe that life has to give us. Thank you for being here, and thank you for you. It's (laughs) Erin. I'm so excited for today's episode. I know I say that every time, but I genuinely mean it. This episode is with one of my best friends, one of my business besties, uh, someone that I've hired her, she's hired me, like, and she is just someone who is so in integrity and really just kind of walks her talk and is the real deal leader. And her name is Jordan Gill. Jordan is the head honcho of System Saves Me and the creator of the Done in a Day program. And she'll probably be your very organized new best friend after this. So over the past four years, Jordan built a multi six figure business helping doers, service providers, and CEOs get clear and organized in their business to scale their income, take back their time, and create the services, sales, and most importantly, the lives that they want. So without any further ado, I will hop on into it. This is a meaningful conversation where we talk about business and the most important part, which is you and how important taking care of yourself is. Um, 2020 obviously has been very challenging for many people. Um, and I think, you know, Jordan has seen many ups and downs throughout the year as well. And so just having her perspective and we talk about trust and faith and, and systems and strategies. So I just think it's a really beautiful dynamic conversation and I hope you enjoy. Yay. All right. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for being here with me today. Yes. I'm so excited to shimmy and share and do all the fun stuff. So thank you so much for having me. Yes. All right. So to kind of like get us kicked off, you know, my favorite question (laughs) is who are you and how did you get here? And you were welcome to interpret that as you wish. Um, But we'd love to hear a little bit about your journey to where you are today and even in this moment. Totally. So I am a woman, Mm -hmm. uh, she, her, hers. And I, um, it's interesting because I, kind of identify myself in a lot of different ways, right? But one main way is that I am biracial. Uh, So you can't see my face talking right now, but you probably saw me on a graphic. And so my mom is French slash white and my dad is African-American. And um, so I am a biracial woman. I have owned my business for four years and I am a college grad. I have my undergrad in journalism and my master's in executive leadership. Uh, I am a puzzle fanatic. I enjoy <laughs> <Yes, you are. laughs> good jigsaw puzzle or five. Um, and also the people at Starbucks and now recently Chick-fil-A both know my name. Uh, and so I was like, oh, shame. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm somebody who, you know, is constantly growing, is somebody who is not afraid to look in the mirror and see who I'm staring back at um, or who's staring back at me. And my thought process on just, you know, where I've come from is there's a few specific things that have brought me to this point, I believe. One of which is I've moved around a lot growing up. So I've moved 12 times. Uh, I went to three different high schools and um, the longest I've stayed anywhere was 12 years in Nebraska, which was when I was like two to 14. And, um, but where I call home is Dallas, Texas, where I live now. And um, I think that it always intrigues me when people have never left a place Mm -hmm. when they went to K through 12, like, and they have the same friends and their parents are in their same house and they went to college in the town and all of that stuff, because how I see the world, see the U S all of that stuff is so dynamic. And I really appreciate differences in people. And I'm actually very intrigued by them versus 
people finding their comfort zone and being comfortable there. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm very comfortable in the uncomfortable because, you know, when I went to college, it was like, well, that's just another move. Uh, I went halfway across the country. I graduated high school in Buffalo, went to University of Kansas. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, it's just a new place. There's more people there. Like, here we go. Uh, And, you know, moved several times then since then. And so that's one area that... I heavily identify with and that I believe in building my business and, you know, stepping into my identity more is something that I consistently go back to and realize the significance of all of those moves and how adaptable of a person I am today. Yeah. That was a beautiful answer. Number one. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. There are so many jumping off points in there too. I think the first thing that you said that really struck me was that you described yourself as someone who's not afraid to look in the mirror and like, likes who she sees. And Mm -hmm. that I think is like, holy crap, that's the ultimate goal. You know what I mean? Like, forget about the business, forget about any of the outside stuff that like we're going for. If you don't have that, nothing else really matters or it doesn't feel as good until you have that, I think. Agree. Wow. hundred percent. Do you feel like you've always been someone who's like had that at your core or is that something you had to work on or work around or where does that come from? Uh, I would say that I've always been a pretty confident person. Uh, Even if I'm aware of my weaknesses or I'm aware of things I would like to change, I, I feel that I, you know, have always sought out um, really good people and environments Mm -hmm. and that I always have, you know, neglected toxicity, um, neglected um, negativity uh, because I'm just not really interested. I don't want to give it any attention. So I think that while it's not that, you know, I'm this like super confident person, I think that I have a general sense of confidence Mm -hmm. in who I am and what I stand for. And, you know, I look back in my life and even in college, you know, it's like college is fun. Like who, you know, we're like partying and doing all this stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. And like, I was so comfortable, like going out one or two times a semester, Mm -hmm. everyone freaking out because they're like, oh my gosh, Jordan is going out. She never goes out. Uh, But I'm comfortable in my own skin, hanging out at home. And I don't think we had Netflix at the time, but whatever alternative. (laughs) Whatever we did back in the day. (laughs) (laughs) Like, what did I do? Um, Watch TV, trash TV and, and do my puzzles and all of that sort of stuff. You know, I would host game nights, which is still something that I do today. And again, I, I have conversations with people who knew me in college and are like, you know, I wish that I felt as comfortable in who I was and stayed home with you. Um, some of my roommates. Um, and I wish that I was a, a, um, as comfortable as you in a sense of knowing what I enjoy and being okay with that being different than everybody else. So I, mm-hmm. I think that I've, I've always had that sense in the sense of just like, it's cool if you think I'm weird. Like it's cool if you think I'm abnormal. Um, yeah kudos like we all have our own quirks <laughs> you know yeah, that's and powerful. I love embracing everybody you know yeah that's really powerful and especially you know I moved a lot during grade mm-hmm. school I would say too and then even you know mm-hmm. I moved to go to college to Boston and I was there for that four years but even within that four years I moved I like did study abroad and coming back and I consistently moved after that up until I've been here for seven years in Virginia but this is the first time I've been anywhere in seven years since I was a kid. Um, And I think there's something that does happen at when you move all the time where wherever you go, you're still going there. (laughs) And so it's interesting to get to know yourself in that way of just like, all right, when I showed up in London, I was like, who do I want to be here? And she wasn't very different than my past self, but it also gives you a little bit of room to like, all right, if I really was going to be me, what would she look like? Oh yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. And I had never thought about how you do kind of step more and more into yourself every move because you kind of let go of the, the, what that environment has thought of you in that, in that time. And you go to a new environment and you can decide, okay, well, I don't have to be this person or I can shed this layer of myself and nobody really knows. Right. (laughs) Totally. And I feel like it's the same thing in the online business world, even with like networking and events And I think Mm -hmm. we first met in person at a live event, though we had met 
like on Zoom, maybe mm-hmm. before that. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> and um, yeah. and so you are like a super connector, and you are great at going to events and like can teach people how to like be better at owning the room. <laughs> and like I have a very clear picture of you in that room too, because like you were a cape. <laughs> and we're like the most fucking badass. Like, this is who I am. This is what I yeah. do. Like, how may I be of service? But also don't mess with me. Like, <laughs> and also I'm yeah. so kind and friendly. Like, sit. you're not a mean girl. You're a sit with me person. Right. Yeah. I knew you were going to bring up the cape. As soon Did as you? you talked about Baltimore, I was like, the cape is coming out. <laughs> the cape is coming. That was the cape trip. <laughs> But it's interesting because to me, it sounds similar to when you're going into a new space and kind of making yourself, it's very much the same in um, it is. a business setting like that, where you're walking in That's and like, so true. you get to choose how powerful you are yep. and, and what does powerful mean to you or like how true you are. Maybe yes. is a better way of putting it. Yeah. So when, when you have clients or friends or people who are kind of like trying to find themselves different than, you know, putting on a cape to be like Jordan, I'll, unless that is a piece of them that feels right. like, oh, she inspired me to like be brave enough to do that. Do you have like advice that you would give to someone who's like, I want that. Like, I want to feel powerful walking into a room and uh, I'm on my couch. You know what I mean? Like what's, yeah. <laughs> how do you go from one place to another? Yeah. I think it really is as, as, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I think this could be interpreted as, but I'm going to say it anyway, Mm -hmm. is I think that your environment is one of the most underrated and important things. Um, And I think that a lot of people talk about the inward stuff. Like we know, okay, believe in yourself, like do the mantras and stuff. Right. And if you are not being reassured consistently um, through the friends that you have and through the colleagues that you have and the family you have, all of that stuff, then it is going to be exponentially difficult, more difficult for you to stand in your power because every time you do, you're having to fight through all of this resistance. And that doesn't mean that you find validation in everybody and um, your sense of worth. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, you know, what I said earlier about like, I don't, do negativity. You know, I was, I was talking to a good friend of mine and a good friend of both of ours, Jerisha yesterday. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in my life and I was sharing everything with her and she reflected back to me. She said, you didn't even really share any problems. Like you just shared (laughs) solutions. Mm. I was like, I don't think in problems, like, yes, there's stuff going on and here's how I'm handling it. Like, let's spend more time in how I'm going to create positivity and light and joy and these things in my life versus wallowing and, you know, um, just thinking about all the problems and how they're piling up. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that you should just ignore your problems. I'm going to therapy. Um, I'm doing the work and it, it really is important to then lean into those people in your life and the environment in your life, whether it is like, it could be as little as like a bubble bath with a candle, honestly. Like if you were like, my house is uninspirational, et cetera, go light a candle, go into your bathtub and just be. Yeah. And under, like if that's where you like to be or go in your closet, if that's where you like to be, wherever a place is that you can feel supported by your environment, that's where you should spend time intentionally. You know, maybe every day, every week, I don't know the cadence, but Um, I think that I'm very good at um, protecting Mm -hmm. my energy and protecting who is in my sphere and in my environment and not in a way that is, I'm Jordan and I'm the best, Mm -hmm. in a way that is, I want to not only be encouraged by other people, but also be an encouragement to others. And if that cycle isn't happening, then it's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. And so... I think that, yeah, environment is one of those things that's so people don't think about it enough Mm -hmm. and they also don't want to do that. Right. If you have somebody in your life that you've known for years, maybe you were like, again, you know, friends, the longest friend I've had, well, I guess Justine, she's, she's somebody I've known since I was like straight up a baby. Mm -hmm. Um, But my next like closest friend was that I still talk to was like seventh grade. So it was like a gap from like K through seven, basically that like, I'm not friends with anybody, which is okay. Mm -hmm. And so 
there are people who are like, I've known her since kindergarten or like, you know, we've been in each other's lives for this long and you allow for the length of time to be more important than the joy and lightness of your life that could be possible if this person is actually draining you energy. Mm -hmm. And it can be tricky. Family is like a whole nother thing (laughs) that I don't even feel qualified to talk about. But as far as as friends, colleagues, uh, communities, Mm -hmm. it really is important to recognize when that season of that friendship needs to be let go. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. Or you need to just limit the amount of time that you spend with this person. And because you don't think about how actually draining it is because you've never experienced it. Like you just, this is my norm. This is my status quo. So it's hard to imagine what that's like. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that it is one of the most refreshing experiences to stand up for yourself and to say yes to your joy and let that person go. Mm -hmm. which I I think is not the answer people want to hear (laughs) 100% it is uncomfortable but I think what happens is that for so long we make the choice to make ourselves uncomfortable instead of the person and by making that choice of like I need a break (laughs) it's so like I'm choosing myself versus you and I'm choosing this moment of really intense discomfort for the future of peace And like, that's a hard decision to make. And it's interesting because we're talking about this in the friend world right now, but I feel like this also mirrors right over into the business world. And like a lot of, I remember one day you said, um, we were talking about, so System Saves Me is the name of your brand. And I forget what was going on because life is life, but like things were happening Mm. and we were talking about like, all right, what do we do? And it came back to like you making your bulletproof coffee. And like the way that you do that in the morning, like is a system that like makes you feel safe and supported and like nourishing to yourself. And I feel like not only is that, that's just in your life, but the way that you kind of teach people to build their businesses is on those same value system that you're talking about building your personal life with. And I just think that's that's like beautiful and amazing and like refreshing because like that is not what we typically talk about or see. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. I think that, you know, when people think of support or even self-care, they're Mm -hmm. like, okay, a candle right? or, (laughs) or, um, you know, good back support, you know, in my office chair, a massage, like those sorts of things. And you're missing out on, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't know if I even want to put a percentage on this, but I feel like 80 to 90% of where you're actually getting support, Mm. Um, which is again, the people and the environment in which you're in. Um, Mm -hmm. And that can, again, you know, if you are in a space that doesn't light you up and I'm talking even literal space, like your home office or your dining room table or whatever that is for you, like, if you can eat, it's like the littlest things. But for me, uh, you know, it's, it's really important that I have these specific candles that I buy from evil, um, evil queen yeah, yeah. that I'm obsessed with that I will always have on my desk forever and ever. I have a very specific pen here. <laughs> there yep. are no other kinds of pens in my entire house. <laughs> if I see it, I will throw it away. Call me wasteful, you know, call the environment police. <laughs> it has to be this pen because this pen makes me write better. It just, it, it, it's silly maybe, mm-hmm. right? But yeah. I have an attachment to this pen and this type of pen that I have hundreds of them at my house. And when I run out, I just get another one. And it's those little things that really contribute to how you energize and how you show up in your business, in your life. And again, I'm not, it's a pen for kind of this. I don't know. This is like five cents at office depot. Right. right, Um, right. I'm not asking you to go out. Yeah. I'm not asking you to go out and buy the most expensive computer or the best ergonomic chair or whatever else. Like it can be those little small things that you see and make you feel 
alive, feel powerful, feel smart, feel brilliant, feel excited. Um, yes. And again, the same thing with people. Like, are you in communities? Are you in group coaching programs? Are you in masterminds that excite you to be in there because the people in there light you up and fill you with love and light and joy? Mm-hmm. If the answer is no, make a change. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Make so, a change for sure. It's so true. And I, I love the example of the pen, especially because a lot of times it can feel like, okay, if you want personal development, if you want to feel amazing, great. It's $2,000 to start right? Yeah. <laughs> and you'll need this equipment and you'll need this perfect light and this, all of this stuff. Right. Stuff, and yeah. I think there's room to really value your stuff and like you can make changes that are very um, either low investment or no investment. And like, to me, that's part of where the change starts is if you're sitting in a room that's totally cluttered, you don't need to go buy a new house or to have the mansion on the river to feel good. Like tidying up what you have is such a energy shift in that. And then you add a yeah. plant for $5, which changes your life. And like, then you get a new table setting that like feels really empowering. And there's all these little teeny tiny tweaks are in your surroundings, whether it's your house, your bedroom, your anything. And mm-hmm. all of that crosses over in your business too. Like you do not need necessarily the $15,000 program. You might need the $15 yeah. an hour assistant. Like, so what is support and how much does it cost to have what you want and to feel good is so like step away from the marketing for a minute and like look for the meaning is what I feel like you're saying. Oh, a hundred percent. Like it is about significance. It's not about, Mm -hmm. you know, the show poniness of everything. You know, I have upcoming a launch and I sat down and thought about what would it feel like for if I can make. I have a a goal of a certain amount of people that I want in my group coaching program that asserts to a very significant six figure number. Mm -hmm. And I was said, what happened for me to be able to like be that person? And I'm going to do those things today. And a few of those examples were I wanted a professional chef for the weeks of my launch. And I did my research. I'm a fact finder. I go in, like find my people. And I found a personal chef who cooks organic and I have certain dietary restrictions like gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free. And the mental energy that I have to put into food is like really draining for me. Mm-hmm. And so I found a personal chef who's like $200 a week for five lunches and five dinners of amazing, like ethnic. She's going to do like Indian and Moroccan and like all these foods I love literally just going to be in my fridge. I pull it out. I heat it up and I eat it. Like, Mm -hmm. and so, you know, most people think private chefs are $500 a week or all this stuff. And, and I spend easily $200 of food a week on myself, Mm -hmm. um, whether that's between groceries or eating out or whatever else. And so then an additional hundred dollars for somebody to cook it for me is, amazing. And maybe personal, you know, personal chef is not what excites you. You're like, I like to cook. That's not a problem. Right. right. I've had a housekeeper for the past four years. Also just like something that again, doesn't need to be what you, what you want. However, for me, it was great to have a clean house and I did not have to be the one on my knees washing the baseboards. Um, so it can be in service. It can be in things, all of those, like adding, putting your desk in more natural light. That helps a ton. If you're working Mm -hmm. in a, in a darker space that affects you. Mm -hmm. And so again, shifting your desk is free. Like you just move the desk (laughs) and it's over with. Um, and so all those little things, um, that, that really add up and you start to, again, it's like a, snowball, I suppose, totally. where it's just like, okay, little, little, little thing, little thing. And then maybe you get into some bigger things and whatever that looks like for you, just do it. Like if you see yourself making X amount of money in your business, think about what, what is in your life then and accomplish that now. I and what that. is in your way of accomplishing that now? And again, you know, I'm not here to, to talk about necessarily money mindset and budgeting and all the things. However, you know, is it scary to think like, oh my gosh, like I'm spending $200 a week on personal chefing. And then when you actually look at the numbers, you're like, I'm actually saving money doing this Mm -hmm. and time because I'm not having to go to the grocery store and all the things like, so then you can kind of 
bring it back down to reality of just like, why am I resisting this? And then let me actually look at the numbers and realize that it's actually not yeah. true. Yep. I love the question of why am I resisting this? Because the, the truth is yeah. like, we all have choices, right? And like, yeah, those, you were so clear on your choices and like, what was the value there and what's the trade? And I think for some people in the beginning part of their business, it's like, I can't trade anything for money at this point because I'm right. trying to do that. And so then focusing totally. on all the things that you can do to just make yourself have more time to make the money. Cool. Yep. Then you get into this place of like, all right, I have some money. I need more time. And like there becomes this new exchange. And a lot of the times when we are avoiding something, it's because of outside lessons that we've learned a lot of the times as kids. And then as adults, it's like, I refuse to hire, not me personally, but as an example, I refuse to hire a house cleaner. And it's like, oh, that's interesting. What's that about? Like, it's too much money. Oh, how much is it? $200. How much do you charge? $2,000. You think that's too much money? You know what I mean? So like if you're exactly. charging 2000 and someone else is charging, it's so just like all of the, the numbers and how much money could you make if you had two hours in a clean space? Like what can you create? Right. Oh my gosh. So yeah. much. <laughs> there's, there's so much available when you're really in the creativity and really receiving and even letting people help you or having those nice things that is receiving. And so a lot of times, even mm-hmm. when we're feeling really like, um, uh, I can't think of the word, <laughs> um, like constricted because we like need yeah. a sale and we're feeling in lack, letting yourself have something actually opens that up if you can let yourself receive. So like, oh, totally. yeah, I think asking yourself just, okay, where can I receive a little bit more today or what support can I receive? All of those things are really important. Yep. Yep. Um, so uh, another question I have for you a little bit to the left of this, but I think still mm-hmm. in the realm of creation and creating the life and business that like feel good to you. What role would you say that faith plays in your like decision-making process and just kind of like business and life creation? Oh man. Uh, Faith is everything to me. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there there are a lot of moments in life where you are going to have to take a leap Mm -hmm. and you can't see a net and it can feel like you are trusting air. Like Mm -hmm. you're literally trusting just (laughs) air. Right. Um, and for me, what, you know, my faith is that I'm an non-denominational Christian. Um, so I believe in God, Jesus and all that fun stuff. And I have a personal relationship with God. And when I first went into business, I went into it um, not knowing what the hay was next. Um, I was in a role that that I enjoyed. It was for an online business owner. I was making good money. I was able to travel the world. She didn't care where I was. It was very flexible. And um, God told me one day to leave. Mm. Um. There was no like, hey, you know, just like warning (laughs) next year, you're going to be leaving. So like prepare. It was like, no, you need to leave. And um, it it was very scary. I am a type one Enneagram. I am a planner uh, by nature. And so for that to be a message I needed to receive was uh, very scary. And uh, so I gave six weeks notice um, the next week and I did not have a personal Instagram. I didn't have a business name. I didn't have anything. And within those six weeks, all I had was an email an LLC and a bank account. Mm-hmm. And I was able to secure $12,000 a month in recurring revenue. Wow. And I was making like 3,500 a month working for this, this woman. So again, with faith, it's, you always have to be thinking that if you're getting a message or if you're getting a a tinkle or twinkle or whatever you want to call it, it has to be for a reason that's better than what is currently happening for you. Mm -hmm. And if you truly, truly believe that it's going to be worse, then it will be worse. Mm -hmm. So that's really where faith comes in. Um, And 
you know, there's, there's a, a verse, Hebrews 11, 1, that talks about faith is, is knowing what you don't see. And um, that's truly what it is. You just mm. are out here blind, blinded by faith, right? There's a lot of language around there where right. it's not tangible. You can't feel it. You can't see it. You can't smell it, uh, taste it. So when it comes to, to faith in my business, you know, there's so many, so many stories similar to, to that leap of faith that I've had to lean into God and he has always provided Mm. always. Like, even if it was just like, I got a random check that I paid too much on my state farm insurance or whatever, like, and then randomly I have money, Mm -hmm. um, to cover what I needed. Um, you know, or again, I go to a consignment shop and all of a sudden they're taking all my clothes and giving me $200, like just things. And, you know, I can't say that that's just happenstance or that's, you know, just life. Um, I think that there's, there's so much bigger at play um, when it comes to faith that, uh, you know, I, I lean on faith very, very much in my business. Um, And while I don't, you know, I don't have like a Christian based business or I'm not um, uh, outward about it in that sense, it is a hundred percent core to everything that I do in my business um, Mm -hmm. and in my life, but yeah, in both. Yeah. I think it's so interesting because everyone has their own kind of like version of spirituality or some sort of aversion to spirituality. It sounds like to me from conversations that I've had with humans. Um, And while I think religion is a thing and people have certain Mm -hmm. feelings about that, this idea of like faith and interconnectedness and the fact that like, yes, I trust myself to do all this stuff. And then also there's probably something outside of me. Like this isn't just me in a vacuum. Right. And I think it's fascinating to hear just like how that works in with different people. Um, Would you say that since that like first initial, it sounds like the first like really big leap of faith um, and stepping Mm -hmm. out, do you feel like those leaps have gotten easier over time? Oh yeah. They get a lot easier. You think? (laughs) I believe so. Um, For me, they have. I think that, um, let me say this. They're not easier in the sense of there still may be hurdles to Mm -hmm. overcome. I mean, easier in the sense of when you are presented with them, Mm -hmm. you can either go in obedience or you can Mm. choose not to. You have a choice. I just got chills. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, if I know anything, this route sounds crazy, but this is obedience and that nudge, that twinkle, that whatever. So I'm just going to go with it as cuckoo as it sounds. And um, it's, it is so profound, the responses and the experiences that I've had in obedience Mm -hmm. that it is, it, it has become much easier for me to at least say yes to the obedience. Right. Um, and then, you know, deal with, with the, the disbelief, the belief systems and the, and the, um, the difficulties of actually action. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's been easier for me to say yes to obedience. And, uh, again, in the action, there may still be some resistance, but I know that I'm just taking it one step at a time at that point. Mm. Do you have anything that you would say to people who are kind of like figuring out the whole jumping and leaping or whatever you call it, like with faith, with trusting yourself, betting on yourself, like when you're Mm -hmm. starting this, so much of the world is set up for you to um, go to school, get a job, get married, have a baby, live happily ever after, and maybe retire when you're 65 and then enjoy your life. Right. And so I feel like this whole, our whole online industry, this space really lets you recreate what your life is and how you're enjoying Mm -hmm. it and like kind of redistributing joy throughout your life instead of saving it all for later and taking that leap of faith and really saying like, I'm committed to this. Like it's on my heart. I'm going to figure it out. I know that I can surround myself with the people who have the tools that I need and the systems that I need to borrow or copy and emulate. Um, but (laughs) <laughs> it's like being stuck at the end of the diving board when you're like, I'm going to, no, I'm not. Yes. I, um, when you're kind of like stuck in that, what do you say to people? Yeah. Uh, I think again, that, that fully comes into, are you, when you look in the mirror, 
Are you happy with who you see? Mm. And while I'm not saying I have not made mistakes, Lord Jesus, have I made mistakes Mm -hmm. um, all over the board. And, and because of the faith that I have, I show myself grace um, and I show other people grace. And for me, that is a very core part of how I move about in the world. Um, That doesn't mean that I haven't been hurt as well. And I want to fight tooth and nail to not show some people grace. Uh, However, (laughs) (laughs) just being really real. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, However, I think that that actually does more harm to you than it does the other person. Mm -hmm. Um, And grace is, is one of the hardest things to practice, not only for other people, but honestly hardest for yourself Mm -hmm. Uh, because we, we have this idea of deserving and worthiness um, that we attach to grace, um, which is like grace is no matter what you're going to show this person, like, it's okay. I forgive you. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, I understand why you made that mistake and I forgive you, whatever that is. And, um, I think we haven't been shown grace enough, just generally speaking. And so then it's hard for us to practice that. Right. Um, when you have been awarded grace, uh, it's one of the greatest gifts you can give people, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, grace and presence, I find those two things are gifts that you don't get very often generally. Um, mm-hmm. And so for me, it's really important that in interactions with people, in conversations with people, they feel as if I am being a hundred percent present that I'm not thinking about what's going on, all the things I got to do today, all of that stuff. Like I'm zoned in, in the conversation and whether it's in person, whether that's in a podcast interview, whether that's whatever, because I want to be an example of presence and I want people to think about, you know, it's not like I don't have other things to do or to think about. Um, it's that I'm being intentional with showcasing presence and what it looks like when you experience that, because it is a gift. You know, we've all been in rooms where people are got 1700 things going on. They're not really listening to you. They're like, yeah, yeah. Like, cool, whatever. Um, and that doesn't feel good. Mm-hmm. And so because I also am a quality time, love language person, <laughs> presence is very important <laughs> to me. Uh, and that's how I feel loved. And so therefore I also want to show that to other people as presence and grace and, and whatnot, you know, when people come at you is the first thing you're doing, just lashing back out and thinking of the first hurtful thing that you can say back, that's going to one up them. Mm-hmm. You know, what is, what is that really doing? Are we in high school? Like, let's cut it out. Um, what you can do instead is step back for a second and think, oh, like this person is trying to hurt me, meaning that they most likely have felt hurt by me first. Mm, That's an interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. And so if they felt hurt by me first and, and, you know, in my relationship, I guess is the easiest example. um, I have to think about, okay, what have I done that has disrespected you? is usually one of my first questions that I ask Um, more than thinking of, okay, how am I going to just like, you know, get back at you sort of thing. It's, or what is, what is it that I'm doing that is, is unloving to you. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that we can actually get to the, to the thing that's actually bothering you. Um, And is it a point then, okay, you know, extend grace to me because I didn't know that that's what I was doing or do I need to extend grace to you? Like, where are we in this, whatever, dance um, of, you know, some sort of miscommunication or whatnot? So I think, I think that, again, it does get easier to say yes to obedience Mm -hmm. um, when you are more and more comfortable showing yourself grace and Mm -hmm. the way to show yourself grace more is to show grace to other people. Um, and then it, again, it just gets easier and you understand it more rather than just being like, Oh, all of a sudden, whatever I get it. Um, you know, action is, is what actually will make it happen. Not just like your thought and intention. Mm. 
that's so good and so beautiful. I love the concept of when you're going through something like that, kind of pausing. And it sounds like what you're doing is almost looking back instead of looking forward to like, instead of getting out of the disagreement, you're like, why is this happening? And that like solution mindedness that you bring through and all that you're doing in business, but also in personal relationships where it's like, okay, clearly you feel hurt about something or you wouldn't have your dagger out trying to hurt me. So like, let's try to put our daggers down, which is that grace component rather than here's how I fight. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's so interesting. Um, I love to the, I, just the concept of that, like, if you want to have more grace for yourself to give it away to others. Yep. And that to me feels like such a mirror of like an abundance rule too, is like, if you want to yeah. receive, give, like, if you want to sell, serve. Yep. Um, so I just love all of that. It's so um, important and poignant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I love you and I appreciate you so much. And I feel like this insight. It's funny because when, when I think of you and business and systems and processes and done in a day and like the (laughs) level of efficiency, right? Like is one of the first things I think about with you and also integrity and also kindness. There's so many things. Um, but this has been like a really beautiful conversation because I think so much of what allows you to show up like that and for everything to be so streamlined is this like incredible inner work of knowing your values and being in integrity with yourself and then really being able to like problem solve in a way that's amazing. And then you Mm -hmm. get to like take these leaps and create and, you know, serve your clients in a way that feels good, which I just find so beautiful. Yeah, I know it's, it's, you know, the systems, I love systems. I can nerd out on them, you know, all day long and they serve a purpose. And that's because I want to be more present in the people in my life. I want to take the time that I need if I need a mental health day or whatever the case may be. And so why build a business that is not in support of that? Why create friction and clutter where it's not needed? Um, And so that's where you do have to think about what am I doing here? Why am I even doing this? Like, what's the point? right? Like, would it be just more fun to go to Starbucks and not think about my work when I leave? Maybe. However, for me, like I love my business. I love my team. I love my clients. Like, uh, you know, I, I think about how blessed I've been really with the, the clients that I've had and everyone for the most part is lovely and, you know, has been, such a a wonderful addition to my life that, you know, the hiccups that come as I do, it's like, okay, you know, my business, I'm still going to continue to do my business. And we, that doesn't mean we all don't have those, you know, moments where we're like, okay, I should just go and, you know, be a administrative assistant and, you know, highlight some stuff. Um, because we all have that. And, Mm -hmm. I think how you get through that is really actually building a business that is evidence of that's actually not going to fulfill you. Mm. Like this business is what is fulfilling you and not in a way that it's all that you have in your life. Mm -hmm. But you think about how much time people dedicate to their work or their careers over years and years and years and years. That's where you spend the majority of your time. Mm So like you should want to look at that and say, how do I actually want to spend my time? Like, how do I actually want to feel supported and be excited about my business instead of just like, all right, like, I'm just going to build this because so-and-so is making a million dollars doing it. Yeah. I dismiss that wholeheartedly (laughs) and I punch it in the throat. Um, So like build it how you want to build it. Find somebody who has a similar business model to you and get the support that you need. um, And like really dig into how this looks in your actual life and business. I think people say that all the time and maybe you didn't know what that looked like before. I hope you can see how I've taken that into action in my actual business and life. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think, again, it's something that people say and then nobody does. Like, I don't know. It is. It's a very, like, you don't really get it until you get it. You know what I mean? And so I do think that there's a lot of times, like, with marketing, it's very much, here's the answer. This is what you need. And if you don't know yourself first and 
or you know what, even if you do, because you don't have to do this perfectly, you can go buy it and then figure it out as you go. But no matter what your journey is, like at some point to have your business feel really good, you have to know who you are and what feels good to you. And from there, you can start to make those decisions and really clean out the people around you. So it feels like you are in a supportive environment and that your business is really supporting you versus you just kind of holding it up. And if that's what you're doing with all of your relationships right now, uh, that's a mirror. <laughs> it is. Uh, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so, so much for this conversation and for your time. And thank you for you. Yes. Thank you so much for having me, Erin. This was so much fun. Hey, it's Erin. And I want you to know that you matter. Everything you're doing and everything you've done, it all matters. It all counts because you are important to the people around you, your family and friends, your audience, your clients, and quite honestly, to the world. Whether you're changing lives on the front line or changing lives while you're changing diapers, your presence matters. Every life you touch counts. And from just one interaction, there can be infinite, meaningful effects. And for that reason, I want to thank you for showing up and doing the work to be with yourself and share your light and your gifts and your love with those around you. If you want support with any of this human being stuff, you're always welcome to join me inside of my coaching membership, Human Being Club at humanbeingclub.com or follow along with me on Instagram for more behind the scenes, silly stuff at Erin Lindstrom. Once again, thank you for being here and thank you for you.